Hello everyone, welcome back to the Immortal Gates of Pyre Break the Game Weekly Alpha Edition number 18. I remain your host, Dominic, or Shadow here, whichever you prefer. And I remain joined by Magical. I mean, Magical. sorry. Well, Magical's not here, here at all. Magical's in oh, game. In sorry, game. I'm joined by ZK. Yeah. Sorry, ZK. No worries, I'm... no worries. I'd love to be Magical. Be that good at the game, that would be amazing. But then he wouldn't be here commentating. Yeah, that's true. I mean, Magical could be commentating, I don't mind either. I, I, he'd have a lot of insight on the stuff happening. Yeah, but they're playing. How could true. they do both? Yeah. I mean, you gotta ask Magical. So a little bit of magic here and there, make it happen. Pull a rabbit out of your hat, and make the rabbit talk in your voice. That how it works. Well, we'll be heading into Santa versus Magical. It'll be an exciting game. It's something we've seen quite a bit, but both of them like to come up with kooky strategies against each other. And we'll be starting the maps on Fool's Bay as well. So a map we haven't seen yet today. A map with a lot more avenues of attack makes it uh, easier to hide some cheeky things and your opponent's, uh, well, your opponent's second base as it is a 2v2 map. Uh, whoever your partner would be in 2v2 is still there, so that's a lot of space where you can play some units and be annoying. That is exactly what we will likely see Santa do. <coughs> Excuse me. I like what we're going to see Santa do. We have Aru versus Aru did something that we haven't seen yet today. Mallow versus Zal. Uh, can be exciting. Both of them have different abilities and different units. Bone Stalkers and Mass Hunters react a bit differently. Mass Hunters are much better in the late game at just dishing out that regular damage. But Bone Stalkers can surprise you pretty early with their extra speed and everything. Uh, but the game often devolves into who gets froms and sometimes i can counter the first units and yes, it's a bit of game of cat and mouse trying to catch your opponent out of position, and, but all the units are pretty fast. So it can be very, very exciting here. Well, both these players have amazing micro skills, so I expect that is going to be the game we'll see. Uh, well, in a bit. Yep, sometimes, uh, sometimes alpha things happen. As we'll be uh, restarting this game soon as a fatal error has hit Santa, unfortunately. It happens. It does happen from time to time, but it's okay. We'll get right back in it, and we'll see what they're up to in the next game. Will they change it up? Honestly, nothing much has happened, so not much to change up quite yet. Uh, pretty much. I mean, I expect that not much has changed. It was double fast expansion. No real information was given or taken or anything, so they might as well do the same thing again. Yep. Yeah, double expansion and see what tech they go for. You can go for fast resonant push that kind of get countered by Frums, but at the same time, Frums just harass everywhere. We can see some I cores in this matchup as well. I, I do expect Magical to be more likely to go for the Frums early. Yeah. Like, I really don't know. I, I feel like Magical just goes for everything, but yeah, Frums are. Good point. That's, yeah, that's, that is a good point. Yeah, they, they just both go for everything. Like, you won't right. really have proxies in this matchup, especially between these two players, as you don't think you can gain that much of an advantage. So, hmm. Yeah, I'm still quite happy to have Fool's Bay up again. It is. Well, I don't know if... Actually, I've, I've been really... I mean, I've mentioned before, Embargo has really gone... Oh, yeah. Like, I've, it's become more of a favorite map than Fool's Bay had been. So... I don't know. I'm not sure how to feel anymore. I mean, Fool's Bay is good. But yeah. is it my favorite anymore? I don't know. Maybe not. Maybe, maybe not. What I like about Fool's Bay is just the different aesthetics. You know, you have the beach on the east side. You oh, have the grass. You yeah. have the plains. You have... That is nice. I, I do love when we just have different different environments meshing together and creating like a big plateau of places to attack. A little beach here and there. Uh, but I guess what I'm looking forward to with well, Embargo's a bit more... Is it lava? Yeah, it's a bit of a lava map, right? There's lava instead of water at the bottom. Oh, yeah. Yeah, they did just change that, didn't they? Yeah. Have you seen New Frontiers? Oh, yeah. Like the art changes to that? Yeah, I've seen... I've seen front They've also changed a bit of the layout. Well, not much of the layout, but just uh, the ramps are changed a bit, makes it a bit easier to go around. Mm -hmm. And, uh... Yeah, it's... A few interesting changes going up in here. See yeah. how how the art I'm direction changes. Yeah. I'm excited to see Frontiers become a more thorough map. It is. It was one of the maps in the prototype. It was in mm -hmm. Vanguard. Oh yeah, really? Yeah, I I was checking it out the other day because I was sort of curious. Like, how does Vanguard feel after playing Immortal? Like after Immortal's development as it has, 
it's actually Immortals more fun. Like Immortal has surpassed Vanguard to me. Oh really? But anyway, like, that there yeah. is a map. I think I want to say it's called Astra, but I can't remember exactly. Hmm. I'm trying to think because I played a decent amount of Vanguard. I can't remember. There were only like two one v one maps in my mind. Uh, but maybe there was a third one I didn't play it much. It wasn't a one v one map. Frontiers wasn't. It was a. Oh. It, yeah, the Frontiers in the in Vanguard was not actually one v one. It was two v two. It was really small for two v two, but it was two v two. Okay, that's uh interesting. Ooh. Ooh, we're getting back into it. Back in Fools Bay. Yeah, because uh, Fools Bay was Naginata, I think. <clears throat> or maybe that was Embargo. Uh, no, I Summer Palace go. is Fools Bay, Naginata is Embargo. Ah, there we go. But yeah, two very fun maps. Sorry, Vanguard. we're getting really into the weeds about the prototype oh, yeah. of this game. But yeah, well, they'll be <laughs> back to not being in the weeds of the prototype pretty soon. Oh, yeah. But like you said, Immortal... It what I like about Immortal especially is just the aesthetics of it and having your own faction, right? Everything is new with, with it instead of uh, mm -hmm. taking back the art assets of StarCraft. So really having something different here to play with it really adds a lot to it. Plus, having the Immortals jump on screen is pretty amazing. Yes, that was the thing I really noticed. Mm -hmm. Yeah, having them... Uh, oh, I can have Zul now. Nice. It's not going to be just a few of them that have that are going to be there. It's going to be absolutely everything that's going to help out. Every, every Immortal can come in and dish the damage. That is a huge difference. Although, honestly, it feels better to control units in Immortal. Which is saying oh, really? a lot. Oh, yeah, that's what I was finding. It's like, I was messing around. And it's like, this is... This feels sloppier. Like, this feels just not as interesting to do. Well, I think one of the big things that the engine to make Vanguard, right? They made a lot of changes for the unit pathing to be a bit different. So often you click somewhere and the units are going to be like, okay, triangle path to get there just to emulate the the, the distancing between units to keep them a bit but, apart. But they do that in Immortal as well. They just, I think, do it better. I mean, given that they have more control. Yeah. Yeah, for sure. Uh, but yeah, you don't see the little arrows coming in and out and like, oh, okay, the units are going a bit weirdly, <laughs> weirdly around. So I kind of like that, not having that bit of a UI uh, mishmash coming in and out. Mm. Yeah. Ah oh, man, how far? How far do strategy games go? Yeah. Well, how far this one's come? Like it's it's really come a long way. Yeah. I'm I'm quite curious about the next change. They said they want to revamp the the zone control units and all that. And we'll see what happens. Uh, what type of changes they want to make there? They don't want to make them as prevalent. But at the same time, you want the zone controls to be there. As, it's really just fun to deploy some units here and there. Maybe they want to revamp the Stabilize, which hasn't been used as much in this game. As I'm trying to recall, Vanguard seems like Stabilize was used quite a bit. It was pretty useful, but here, not just not quite as much. I, yeah, I don't know. I mean, there's a bit of a UI thing. Yeah. That. You say like Scepters would Although be pretty the, good the Vanguard Bonestock equivalent actually didn't work as well. Hmm. Yeah, because they there was a Bone Stalker ambush thing, one of the Protoss races, but they had like the way it works in Immortal is that if you move a bit and then stop, then the Bone Stalker stay cloaked or stay hidden. But in Vanguard, if you start as soon as you start moving, just for I guess they had to do it technically, the unit will always become visible briefly before going invisible again. But it's a good way to go about it. I remember. I remember in Vanguard, some units are just like cloaked forever and you can't really jump on them because then you just get killed by getting closer. It's like, oh my god, that's a, that's hard to get on top of them. Some units are a bit too powerful that well, felt too uh, just bad to play against. And that's kind of the feedback that we should be giving to more now. This just does not feel fun to play against instead <laughs> of, oh, this is too strong. I suppose, uh, but I don't think it has the same no, effect here. No, there hasn't been really units that have been game breakingly strong despite what some have said like oh dervish breaks the game i can't practice anymore so, no you still can just uh you know enjoy the dervish ah yeah. oh, man fool's bay fool's bay fool's bay so, yeah this weekend i do have my father-in-law visiting from france we're letting him taste poutine it's gonna be a uh, exciting, the great, See, the great like Canadian, it. the great Canadian cuisine. You know, just uh, going up there and showing them what we've come up with in the Grand North. I mean, it's it's only really been 
across Canada for like 10-ish years in my experience, if that. Yeah. Yeah, and before that, it's been all about Quebec, right? We've had it for... Exactly, it was purely so Quebecois long. thing, and then it's like, oh, no, this is... This is I'm good. Poutine, I think it. Poutine places pop up all over Vancouver. Really? Like, I remember a while back... Oh, yeah, Vancouver's some good ones, too. Poutine. Vancouver's Poutine was known for being the Costco Poutine. You just go to Costco to get the best Poutine. It's like, oh, interesting, because I wouldn't go to Costco for Poutine here, but I guess that's what you get, that's what you get. Now, there's some decent... I mean, okay, granted, I haven't been to... I haven't tasted Montreal Poutine, so I don't know for sure, but... It was it like what is here is pretty good. There there yeah. are there are good poutine places here. Yeah, because if they said some bad ones, you're like, okay, this is better than that one at least. So I guess this yeah. is good. It's like yeah, that's yeah, pretty yeah. much it. Often people will fight like, oh, this is the best poutine you can. I'm like, yeah, it's poutine. It's not that that much of an exquisite <laughs> dish that you can be like, oh, this one's like 10 percent. But I was like, really? Okay, sure. The fries are good. <laughs> the cheese is good. Go the sauce poutine. is good. Yeah, exactly. So, I don't know. Yeah, it's good because you put uh, you put uh, duck on it. Okay, I agree, duck is great, and that's why it tastes good. But besides that, well, it's still poutine. It's still fine. It's still fries and gravy and cheese. Yep. Also, oh, be fair, it's like, like look, Ke Ke Quebec food is not known for being fancy. It's known for letting you survive winter. Exactly. <laughs> and then Vancouver food would be survive. Oh, that is fancy. Somehow. Oh, yeah, it's, be... it's, it's, it's stuff survived the rain, right? And since you didn't, you weren't there like 400 years ago as much, you didn't have to survive the, the cold as much because, well, one, it's not as yeah. cold there in general, and you weren't there, so. No, no, they didn't really start, like, doing anything. A, a colonization of this area didn't really get going until the mid 19th century. Yeah, that's a long, long, yeah, okay. So after you had the railroads already, you didn't have to Pretty worry. Pretty much, yeah, that's, that's what allowed it. Yeah, you just have the food coming in from the from east, so you don't have to worry about growing your own and just eating that. Well, there's a lot of arable land here. No, they do grow. They do grow, like there's plenty of farmland that is used to grow our own to this day. That's true. That's true. <laughs> but you want the spices and stuff. You want fancy stuff. Or at least true. I, I guess you can just use a lot of butter and salt. You'll be well, good. Well, a port a port city helps with that. All oh, right, I forgot about that. <laughs> yeah, we're, we're kind of on the Pacific coast. We're kind of on the same coast as most of the things that most of the places that produce spices. Yeah, yeah, you can just go to, to India, right? Just like a free week boat ride? Not sure, actually, how long it would take. I guess. Ooh, Santa's about to get <laughs> caught out here. Oh, no. Don't go in. Lots of bone No. Stopper. That's not the way to India at all. No. Oh, but this might be the way to India. This is the way to riches that you want. Jumping on top of those poor mass hunters a bit slower. Uh, but Santa does not want to commit up the hill, which is often a judicious choice. Always dangerous to go up a hill and just get flanked by everything. Did scare Magical off enough to go back to their main base, which means Santa has... Ooh, Santa has a great Divine Conquer situation right now. Magical's gotta be super careful. They're gonna get caught out, lose a couple of Mass Hunters. Santa, small advantages will pile up. So this is what they need. Yeah, it's really the early game early game here between Mala and Zul, right? Bone Stalkers are slightly faster, so you can do more damage. But the other side, Magical has... Uh, the Mass Hunters, when does he get offering, can outspeed them and get in the right positions. But as you showed, there is a blood... Uh, a blood well going up in the west side, probably for some frumps to uh, start harassing Santa pretty quickly. Oh, oh. oh. this is oh, unexpected. what? Just okay, going really faster. Or going for the run by. Yeah, kind of boring that they pl he placed it there instead of inside the base. But sure, you can still get a run by here. Yeah, let's go from here all the way down to the rest of the. Yeah, makes sense. Yeah. Question and behind is Santa's going for are they going for resonance going for Icor? They could go for both. You could use both. Yeah, I kind of feel Icors, but then yeah, Santa has almost no Aether. He needed more Aether if you want to head for resonance a bit faster. And they're up against a bunch of units that Icors just deal with. Magical's Magical's army is pretty much Icor food. Santa well, though it's a question of whether they can set that up in time before, you know, all these masked hunters from Magical's little proxy base decide to actually show up. Yeah, an offering does come online. With offering, he's able to chase him out and even chase him all the way back to Canada as Santa, he needs to head back before he gets shot out of the sky. On a boat? Oh yeah, the sky, the sky, the water, everything you can get shot out of. It's a flying out boat. Of the sky. Yeah. Why would you go for a, for, a, for a water boat? That's kind of boring. Always go for flying ones if you can. No, flying boat or no, Santa Claus is ready for the next fight. But is he in the right place, though? Magical okay, the right about unit composition, you're right. They're not ready by positioning. Not at all. Oh, Magical coming in just the right time. 
Santa way out of position, has very little time to regroup. Oh, but the Icors can head, deal a lot of damage in the meantime. Magical heading to perfect position. Getting the back, the Bastion dishing some damage out. As he gets the first Icor, one Icor only. All the all the symbiotes go down as well. Only two left. And here come the reinforcements, Santa. And Santa might Santa might just have enough to hold at this point as they're both fighting as strong as they can. Magical's unit is getting evaporated as with only one's the call left, and it goes down as the towers and Bastion dishing out the hurt. That was at the cost of one Icor as well. I mean, some economy, but mostly one Icor. Santa Claus has an opportunity to get revenge, and Magical knows it. Pulling back to f to deal with what will be the regrouping. Santa Claus already in position to start wrecking the economy. Magical not at all prepared to defend. Yeah, behind this, Santa has full map control. We'll see the mass hunters coming in from Magical on the west side. It's like, huh? Why is that there? <laughs> and, well, he's going to kill it for nothing. Icor's, nice. Icor's doing their best as uh, they're, well, they're about to get surrounded, but get out still. The speedy That's boys. speed upgrade. Yeah, the speedy dogs get out. The good boys get on the east side and look, Santa ready for his next attack. He sees his opponent expanded. He's slowly expanding behind it. But And yeah, Magical Mag throws in the towel. Santa Claus takes the first game. 1-0 mm, for Santa. Well, he's and done again. this before. <laughs> yeah, that's true. I mean, don't forget, Santa is the one that's generally been... Like, they are persistent second place. Every single tournament, the last few tournaments, has been second place for Santa. Hmm. So, if Santa... If Santa wins this, they will finally have won an alpha tournament. This is... I mean, this is the first... This is winner's finals, not grand finals. There's still a whole other series to go. But winning this puts them one step closer. No, because if he loses this, he'll have to fight Zoo or Atlander in the... Or wins the news of round two. Uh... Yeah, we'll see what who ends up getting the, the advantage there. Okay, back on Lost Province. Magical does not want to deal with the weirdness again. <laughs> this is all Santa's response in the chat. Proxy Alter! Wait, which one of us is the NA player? <laughs> yeah, that's accurate. Yeah, Magical does love a... Uh... Wait, no, Magical... It's from East Europe, so at that point, some of them do play on NA because it's closer to Oceania, but not really. No, I'm pretty point. sure Magical. Ma Magical probably only plays EU. Yeah, because they're in like the eastern side of Russia, right? I think so. I'm not exactly sure. <laughs> the exact position. <laughs> well, interesting part is to like to know. Yeah. I have no, to I'm ask kidding. him eventually. We'll see. Magical, where, is, where do you live exactly? All we know is east, east, east. And he's always yeah. up, no matter the hour. That's all I've realized. Like, yeah, no, you can ask questions. Good chance match goes awake. And I don't know Which... if it's normal for him to be awake or not, because I don't know what the hour hit his time zone. I mean, I don't know them either. I mean, maybe it is normal. Maybe they're... Maybe they just don't sleep. Maybe that I is the know. real trick. That's how you become good at, at, at these type of games. You just stop sleeping. I would not recommend stopping sleeping, but uh, have you if tried it, it works for you. I, I have. Oh, okay. It's not recommended. Yeah. No, I've been miserable for months. Oh, yeah, no. Just try the sun. The sun really puts you to sleep. Or is that the opposite? That burns you? It's, you know... Uh, eh. Okay, so we see Santa sees that his opponent won free expand for... Oh, Santa also go for free expand first boring. Well, after the... <laughs> The e for boring. Well, they're awesome. Yeah. They can they can freely expand. Yeah, and here comes is that mode is going out, but probably just at the tower, unless he really wants the proxy to be further out. Ooh, not Ex unusual. Exciting, not unusual. Exciting. Okay, hmm. exciting and unusual. A bit like your sleep. Boom. That's cruel. Oh, it's not exciting. It's not exciting. <laughs> it's very boring. Yeah, I guess you're just you're just up. It's like I don't want to fall asleep, but no, not this time. Well, Santa is in a position they wanted to go for some proxy. They haven't given it away. Magical sees this Legion Hall in the base. They see there's no proxy Legion Hall. Like Santa is not even making moves to be forward on the map. So Santa just needs to make sure that Magical doesn't get... If they are planning on doing something with this moat, just making sure Magical doesn't get wise to it. He hasn't placed it in the quite usual spot, you know, in the middle of the bases near those uh, out of lines. North is pretty... Here, yeah. yeah, there's pretty popular. Yeah, it's a proxy... Oftentimes you see proxy Angelarium. Right in this north section. 
So mm -hmm. I kind of expect Santa Claus is going to be going for that. We'll see what they do. They oh. have, I mean, have to build this whole foundry, and then from there they can build the Angelarium. So it's going to be another minute or so before they have that option. It's pretty interesting. He did kill that tower, which means that if Magical is really paying attention, he's, oh, that tower is destroyed. Why would that be destroyed? And then he could say, okay, maybe there's a proxy. But uh, you, Magical probably not going to go by there. And Oh, actually, he's really just going for tower kills. Huh. Ooh. Well, right. for now, just going for tower kills. That does give Santa more pyre. It's actually something we've seen a bit, right? Do you want to just trade some alloy for that free pyre? Because you don't need to deal with those towers. You can just attack them with a symbiote, with a worker, and you don't have to think about it afterwards. That's, yeah, that's sort of the the effect of, oh, the side effect not. of having the workers not be targeted by them. I kind of like it. I, I kind of like that you have an extra choice. I just want more power, so, so I'll oh, no. take out some oh, of no. my, I'll take out some of my energy to be able to attack them. Uh-oh. I don't know. Well, huh. Actually, we haven't had this, this many crash in a while, I feel like. Yeah, this is not normal anymore. Mm, they both crashed. Well, we'll see what's up. Uh, no, I crashed. No, no, I didn't quite crash. Yeah. We can give the logs to our player to... Uh, we can give the logs to our player to our... Uh, to the devs and they'll see what's up. I guess the only yeah. thing unusual is there's multiple spectators. Maybe that's it. At least that could well, be. Well, that needs to be fixed. And we've got no we've done multiple spectators before. Yeah, no, exactly. That's why I'm a bit surprised. Like I feel like I've had that before. Uh, but yeah. maybe yeah, uh, we don't really know problem. what's causing it. We don't know what's uh, causing it. So that's up, that's for the devs to figure out. Yep. Always find the problems and then give them to the devs and devs like ah, oh, thanks for finding it. I guess. <laughs> well, then the game works better. I mean, that's yeah, exactly. good, isn't it? Yeah, it's always like the, the half, like, oh, you found a bug. But you did find a bug. So there, there, there's the both sides of the coins, right? You're like, oh, it's more like if you find game. the repro case, if you can find a way to reproduce it reliably, then it's nice. Oh, yeah. So that, oh, there's a bug. It broke. It's like, what broke? It broke. Oh, okay. <laughs> Stop working. Yeah. Fix it. Fix. Like, uh, yeah, but what's broken? You know, fix the now. game. The game is broken. Oh. No repro case, only fix. Yes. The dream. How's that the dream? Dream? The dream is not repro fix? Pretty sure that's the dream of all of all devs. Like, oh yeah, I know exactly how to reproduce it. Here's exact reproduction case. Oh, Here's I meant ceramics. like I'm not giving you a repro case, just fix it. Oh yeah, that's a that's a nightmare, not a dream. Yeah. That's <laughs> so I was confused. So still 1-0, and we haven't been able to finish this one up. No. Yep. Oh, apparently it's a server crash or something. Yeah, that happens. Hmm. Uh, besides, so back to the food discussion. So we're getting poutine, or at least that's what I've been told. I'm going to have poutine coming in, so I'll be happy about that. But then we're, we're trying to give him like other cuisine that they don't probably don't have in France. I'm like, oh, you know, we, we're going to give them uh, Caribbean food. It's like, you didn't know who conquered the Caribbean. So I'm like, all right, it's true. The French kind of conquered a lot of places. So it's like, yeah. Yeah, they, be... they, lo they lost it sooner than the English, but they had a lot. Yeah, exactly. It's like, oh, yeah. So I'm like, oh, yeah, we're going to give him Caribbean food. It's like, no, they, they kind of, France kind of conquered that. So they do have a lot of uh, Caribbean food as well. Hmm. Fortunate, like, what do we have that they don't? It's like, oh, poutine. Okay, I guess it's poutine. Yeah, yeah. Well, potatoes. Uh, wait, they don't have potatoes? They have potatoes, just not our potatoes, because we have big ones. Ah. Uh, yep. You know, we have the big potatoes that make great fries. Hence again, back to the poutine, back to the cheese curds, back to hmm? the gravy, back to everything that makes... Well, as we all know, France does not have any cheese. No, Famous they... they they're famous for not having cheese, yeah. They're famous like, oh, you know, those great regions of uh, of Brie, of, uh, of course, that's in the, the United Kingdom. Everyone knows that the English are about oh, the yeah. food. English are known for, reputed for having the, the best fancy food in the world. Ooh, someone's coming to kill me. No. Not sure by who, but, you know. 
Yes. Not by the English. <laughs> oh, definitely not them. Like, oh, you know, let's have some blood pudding. Like, pudding's supposed to be sweet. Okay, yeah, that's luckily. a European thing, though. Like, that's that's everywhere. My my really? mother grew up with that, and she's and her family's from Quebec. I'm from Quebec, and I've never had blood pudding. And I, it's, well, you're also 25 had... years younger than her. The what? You're also 30 years younger than her. All right. Okay. So back in the day, there were some different things. Yeah. Different foods at different times, but the poutine has always been there, making us happy and not so light. <laughs> but again, survive winter. Oh yeah, surviving the winter is great. You keep warm as the winter is coming slowly but surely. As it was minus five yesterday, now it's back to twenty degrees. Yeah, I don't know what's up. Like, same thing here. Not not as extreme, mind you, because we never get negative degrees. What are those? But it is. It has been like. You know, the last few days have been in the twenty low twenties. Today it's gonna be twenty seven for the Ooh. weekend. Oh, beautiful! Perfect. It's timing. October. Summer's supposed to be over a month ago. I mean, you should enjoy what the is this? degrees. I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. I would have a barbecue at that weather, and so it's like, ah, uh, you know, it's about twenty. I'm not really gonna go out for a barbecue. Well, the only barbecue I have today is Icor's like acid burning through stuff, but that's about it. I mean, it burns them. I guess it cooks them. Yeah. I don't know. Can you cook things with Icor spit? I mean, that's you can cook stuff with acid, right? Like if you have a, uh, you, you have I, stuff that's cooked with lime, lime juice, if which is you, just acid, so it's kind of the same thing. I mean, if you throw acid in the water, it does tend to boil, so there's an option there. Not hopeless. What's it called? Thing. Oh yeah, ceviche. Yeah, ceviche is the thing that just you, you just have fish, raw fish, but it's cooked with lime juice, and then the acid actually cooks it, so it's the same thing, right? You can just yeah. have icor juice that makes ceviche. So, so how about some nice little bone Behemoth soccer ceviche. ceviche? Ooh, Behemoth Ceviche. That would be pretty heavy as well. Or light they're since perfect. they're flying. But they're flying, so it's probably not that heavy, right? If it's enough to make you float up. Uh, on well, you that depends if they have, like, sacks of air or something, or some kind of gas. Mm, okay. So it's going to make Could, you gas. I mean, I don't know. Are they, like, maybe they're just, like, a organic hot air balloon? Yeah, sure. We'd have to ask that. I, for, I forget exactly. I know it's some kind of... The magic of some sort, whatever is the side is magic here. And right, Santa, so Santa, and something. Yeah, Santa going for the same strategy with his moat being annoying in this top right corner. Well, well that's worked out last time. I mean, assuming I mean, it wasn't the constant he didn't, server crash. He didn't lose last time, so yeah, it no, worked. No, no, it didn't. Everyone lost last time. <laughs> Everyone loses one day, but not every day. Everyone loses them when the world implodes. Hmm. Philosophical there. Yeah. Except the people that were going to leave anyways, and then the world implodes with them instead of them being alone in the implosion. So many the mass hunters here are going to implode. I mean, they're still dead. Well, that's true. Can't really think about it. No, well, not without a universe. Who will go for that cat? Magico heading up sees those. Yeah, he must get the first the first blood. I uh, got to get that opening. Make sure that Santa's not get set up. Because if Santa gets set up there, Magical's gonna be Magical's gonna struggle. I and mean, as it stands, they already have to be fast stacking up to something. Which oh, they're not even doing that. Ooh, this is risky for Magical. They do not have they don't have a counter for the inevitable absolver. Well. Uh, as we've seen, the hunting ground can deal with it decently if you get r in the right position. The Hayat is Santa just getting as much power as possible from the camps on the north as he wasn't expecting to get it in the main places. But Magical does have free Efer, so he is tanking up, getting the God Heart. But as you said, he won't have it for this push quite yet, as Santa is pushing forward. But it doesn't really matter. If Santa, uh, if Magical is able to get in the way, get on the, get on the road of his opponent and just slow him down just enough, it can be fine. And there we go, slowing him down. Santa yeah. turning back. Good micro. They don't have to fight into Santa's forces yet. The Absolvers are not going to be giving Santa that much room to breathe yet. But, you know, they get built up over time. Like this is gonna this is going to become a problem for Magical. And, oh, the teapot, the teapot and natural, we just know what that's for. <laughs> He'll be placing a tower at the top and attacking the boats, making it very hard to dislodge as it's the power tower has a lot of energy. Oh. No, what? What? Ooh, Magical really... I mean, they want to know what Santa... What, sorry, Santa wants to know what Magical's up to. They do see Magical is going to switch over into 
resonance. Yeah, that's the know. big tell. That's the big tell. That is, yeah. You want to know that or bone canopy, and now you know it's not from. It's great. I can just keep going completely ground units. Hence, hence Santa Claus advance right now too. Like they know it's they know it's resonance. They know resonance is going to take a little while because there's only half built anyway. Yeah. Hunting Ground's already set up for magical, so he's he has a good spot to wait up for his opponent. His, his opponent his units get cloaked. Oh, even on the mini map, I didn't know that. Oh yeah, you, it's. I'm not sure that's intentional for spectators, yeah. but. You don't see them if on the minimap if they are cloaked. Hmm. Well, Santa, well, Santa knows better into attack into this. That hunting ground will stay there for a long, long time, and Santa will try to attack somewhere. No, well, Southwest is a good choice. Andre, I know, but I can't right now. Yeah, I cast want to eat. That's uh, the other thing we need to he feed him some food. Tea. It's the water he wants. He wants water from the bathroom sink specifically. Oh yeah, you gotta open up the faucet and then he goes straight from that. Running water type of thing. Yeah, but yeah. I I can't right now, because yeah. you know I I'm busy yeah. sitting here talking to all of everyone here. Oh yes. Well, see, we just we just got a a, a running tower or whatever, so now they can't just drink with that. It's not that bad. I have that, but the problem is that care. I can't clean out the pipe that actually causes it to spout water. Oh really? Like I need a pipe cleaner or something, I can't find any. Oh wow. Yeah, so I can't actually get it to work that way, which sucks, because it means that he doesn't have that tower. Mm. Okay, the Frums are coming in from Magico. Santa got juked. He saw the he saw the stuff, but of course, Icor's coming at the same time, so is going for a triple prong attack. No, just dual prong, boring. Uh, going for an attack at the Nacho and the main, and Santa will lose at least one moat, which is already lost, and the three Frums come in, while the Icor's... Okay. Oh, he's going for the last shot. The tower will defend him enough. Oh, yeah. This is Santa Claus forced to... Like, Santa Claus got to push. Like, they cannot... Got to either push or defend, and they're going for push. And that was the issue, right? Santa was going for, again, defensive game playing Orzum, getting all that power up to make as many towers, defensive towers. But it didn't work out as... His opponent found a way in. The Frums are being as annoying as they can. Most going back to mining a bit too early as the Frums are still That's here. automatic. That's autom that is not Santa. But yeah, that's automatic. Yeah. Oh, man. And Santa losing more and more. Yes, he sends back. Here comes the Sentinel. Sentinel can deal with free Frums decently well. Magical knows oh. it. Magical. Magical gets out of dodge, but they did their damage. Yep. Uh, behind it, Santa did force his opponent to cancel his third, so that's a decent win for him. At the very least. I think, it was I think that was a Resonant, too. Which is also oh, wow. a huge win. Yeah. Well, okay, we say third. Really, it's the fourth. Yeah, because Magical has a secret hidden base that Santa has no idea about. Well, that is surprising, actually. I'm surprised Santa hasn't been sending scouts around there. Very Santa's been very much focusing on oh, no. making sure the Santa control is theirs. Not so much on making sure that their opponent isn't sneaky. And the Icor is still here to be sneaky. Gets gets in position again, but the Scepters are here this time. Icor gets a kill before his death. A second kill. Oh, man. He paid for himself there. He can have as much ceviche as he wants. <laughs> if he was still alive, of course. He's Angel now. ceviche. Angels? No, he doesn't want to deal. Well, he doesn't want to deal with know. angels either. That's true. They're hot. Yeah. <laughs> Plasma. Yeah, plasma is not delicious. You want to get the human centauris or the ones you want to get. Faith probably... Uh, might make you a bit overcooked sometimes. I don't know. That's a, also a good, if disturbing, question. <laughs> Does faith Fair. make you taste bad? Huh, that's yeah. a good question, is it? Ooh, magical ready to jump in. Has his... Had his ambush, but no, do not ambush on top of five absolvers sieged up and ready. But the six frums are ready to dish more damage. And no towers. Like, nothing besides, you know, the standard Orzum towers. Not... Okay, not yet. Santa, Santa's done with this. They want to get Fire Singers up. Yeah, finally, finally he wants to deal with the, the six runs. And Magical is, might be willing to get some more, but not quite yet. Still dishing the damage, those runs coming in, get another kill. Oh man, no mining from that base this whole time. And behind this, Magical has been mining on free bases. We do look at the army value though. It's still pretty equal, even Santa pulling ahead, slightly but surely pulling ahead. And that's mostly just the Frums that aren't the most powerful in the straight-up fight. That really can hurt Magical if they, they do decide to fight up straight up. 
But with Sentinels, with Zephyrs, Santa Claus is well equipped to deal with this. Yeah, at this point he has the defense at home and he can push to push forward as they're both not going to intercept each other. <laughs> Magical moves forward, the teapot detects it, so Santa moves back and wants to be certain not to die to anything. They are playing Orzum. They're very much playing Orzum as Orzum. Like, don't don't put yourself out there. Don't put yourself in a vulnerable position. Just constantly fight from your towers. I just make that work allow, for you. It did allow Magical to get that secret base in the bottom west. And keep it. They've been... Sheesh, that's half... Is that half mind? No, it can't have been half mind. Oh, it's been there for a Still, while. Oh, it know. has. just surprised it's down to three. only 3,000. Doesn't it start at oh. 3,200? Okay, oh, no, 3,600, my bad. No, it's been okay. for a couple minutes. And Magical chasing his opponent. Ooh, gets a few kills, but as soon as Absolver siege up, he runs back. He got his kills. He chased him just far enough. And Absolver stays behind, can detect everything. Kill the tower that Magical was trying to set up. Santa will try and set up his own towers in different positions. Bit farther back, Santa's not trying to contest the center as directly. They have it, to some degree. But it's easier to defend this tower than it is in the other ramp. It's just going to be harder to use it as a staging ground. At this point, here comes the Behemoth, and that might be Magical's goal card. He wants to get the, the full Behemoth upgrade before he goes. And... <laughs> few kills. Few yeah, Magical kills. does get out of there in time. While taking care of one of Santa Claus's bases. Like Santa Claus's expansion attempts are being stifled. They have found that Magical expanded, or where's Magical's secret expansion was. Yeah, but can he uh, can he afford to go there with it? all his armor? I don't think hey, so. Yeah, exactly. You want to defend the main parts or else Magical's going to jump on you. Magical even gets the pyre here as the behemoths are coming in and out. And now those little, cute little Kitos. Pretty much perfect to get rid of this tower. Well, at first I thought the firms would not be able to get it. Uh, it seems like as the longer it goes, the closer and closer it gets. And Magical jumps on his opponent. Santa Claus, a bit out of position as the tower goes down. Magical was going for, was heading for the base on the northwest, uh, in the southwest, but decides, oh, maybe not. Maybe I need to keep defending everything. <laughs> And another Santa power. still canceled it though. Like they 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 got the they got the power back. It's not the biggest deal for them. I mean they do lose the center. Both towers have been wiped, which <sighs> sucks for them. Yeah, and magical magical starting to run away with the game when it comes to their army overall. Yeah, army map control. We're talking about Matt, uh, Santa being a bit ahead in the in the army value, but it's not the case at all in Mordor's behemoths are worth the waiting gold, especially at this point. Even if they're light enough to fly, they're ready to jump on their opponents. The Keto's coming in. And jumping on top of that poor scepter, and does it get away? Just barely, it barely gets away. Oof. Santa Claus focusing more on that ground artillery, not going in for, not going for their own advanced air units, not going for thrones, but they might be fine. You know, Castigators will get rid of the behemoths, and the yeah, this is that's a good good composition. Howlers help deal with the resonance. I'll Come down heavily to micro, but we'll see what happens. Oof. Match red Santa Claus does not want to go in. They they have no confidence they can take this fight. And yeah, red seers are even in, so if he tries to escape, he might get rooted in place as he tries to run away. Wait, did you have always to... a scary prospect? Yeah. Yeah. Oof. Oh, scepter scepter tried to do some harass, but there's so many arrow wars. Magical was set up for it. Behind us, he will take his uh, usual fourth base as his fifth base. Yeah, no. <laughs> Rums are done at that base with the tower and the fire singers. There's nothing he can do. Magical gets a few. Okay, Santa gets a few kills oh, here as Magical is out of position. Uh, I was expecting Magical to go for a counterattack, given they know Santa's out of position. There it is. Took a little while. Santa's still going for the expansion. Their their base is wide open. Mm -hmm. yeah, so Magical Santa's got no easy way back. And yeah, Magical will lose one of those bases, but the same, yeah. Magical is completely in position, so if Santa tries to move back in any any way, Santa, uh, Magical could intercept him, but no, Magical is simply going for the attack. Goes for head for the first tower. And burn broken to help deal with that massive bone stalkers. But hey, Kido don't care. Kido come in, do as much damage as he can. It's healed, but not enough. The damage is being dealt. It'll go down pretty quickly. 
as the next push keeps coming. It did slow things down. The behemoths are heavily damaged from that Empire Unbroken. This is... If this is a base race, Santa Claus bought themselves a lot of time by setting the Empire Broken. Yeah, that's a very powerful army for Santa. Well, they both have very powerful army. It'll come down to the main fight. I don't think both of them can afford to completely trade out. Uh, just the bases is attacking into the natural and, and, and main is really dangerous getting in a bad position to getting out. And yeah, Santa needs to move his uh, red stairs out of position. He sends some blood plagues to slow it down. Oh man, Santa's third are always so protected with three citadels in the way. Magical losing units. <laughs> losing units left and right. We don't see another Empire Broken quite yet, but they don't need it. It's just the attri slow attrition as Santa Claus also cutting off reinforcements from Magical in their main base. Magical has expanded significantly across the map, so base race is going to be tricky for Santa Claus. They only have two bases currently. While they are taking out Magical's bases rapidly, it's Magical's building them that much faster. And behind us, as you said, Santa's not building any other bases. He seems content in the, like the main army fight can go oh, either oh, way, right? Oh, they going for the six o'clock. Santa has yeah, been opening here just... while setting up for the army fight. Ooh, Slight Santa advantage Logan. to Magical in terms of overall firepower. But it's down to the Behemoths, and the Cascaders are here. The Red Plague dealing enough damage to put Santa Claus on the back foot should the attacks come back here. Magical forced to retreat, but that retreat is worth it as the Blood Plague means Santa's forces simply cannot push the, press the advantage. And yeah, look at how uh, how all those units are so low on HP. They have their shields left, but their HP is uh, is laughable at this point. He needs to heal up if Santa wants to take the next fight. But of course, yeah, they, they lost half of that army just yeah. from the Blood Plague weakening. Oof, the power of the plague. At this point, uh, Santa needs to heal up. Heads to his own citadel that heals up all the units of any of any composition. Can as much as he can. And behind this, the next fight, uh, my very well be the last. Is... Magical's well, got three... the advantage coming in. Yeah, only three behemoths left. Did lose half of those. And both of them checking for X-Matches, but Magical simply expanded to the north, and that's what he needed. He's, he's out mine on the ether. So they're both ether starved after this. Of course, Santa's really only on his main and natural now. Whatever's left of it, in any case. This is a scary prospect. Baiting Magical into a fight they don't want to take. Magical yeah. does lose a fair few units in the process. Yeah, need to be careful about any time you try to go into that choke point. Behind this, Magical taking one of his opponent's uh, tower foundations to build his own tower. Oh, the moats coming in, but the frums were there to intercept. And behemoths can just jump a little bit to find as much damage as they can. Yeah, exactly. Throw the Quiddles, do? run. Ooh, but the throw Quiddles, maybe get nailed by the Castigators in the process. And one, one goes, goes down. down. Shower oh, yeah. with the Ostrike, not getting a whole lot of damage, and the Bone Stalkers won't be able to advance back in, but to cut rid of a Sharu, that's huge for how Aether Star these players are. Oh man, those Charles need to heal up as soon as possible. They're being created as fast as possible for Santa, but Magical sees it, deals a bit of damage with Bone Stalkers. Yes, man, Santa's stuck in his base, but if he wins next fight, like, convincingly, that'll be enough to push him forward. That's it a tough call. Like, that, oh, that's, a, that's, a, that's a tall order. Oh, definitely. The residents are already sieged up, the Behemoths are coming in, and look at how many Red Seers there are. Those can just root the enemies in place, plague them to death, till those units have nothing left. But Ostrakes are powerful, and here come the Blood Plagues before they jump in. Ostrakes coming in as fast as possible, dealing their lightning damage, fire burning through everything. But Magical has a decent enough army, he's pushing forward. Behemoths getting taken down by the Scastigators. It's only... It was only Bone Stalkers left, but that was enough as Magical pulls through to win. And it's now 1-1 in this series. Well, Santa Claus has the working out for them. They had the strong opening in Fool's Bay. They might go back to that, seeing as it worked out for them. But that that last game, man, they were they did not really manage to get momentum. Like that that hidden expansion did so much work for Magical. Yeah, that was a uh, that hidden base. Santa not be able to see it was a uh, a game changer. If they had scouted it, it would have been Santa's win easy. Oh, Magical come out with a tricky place. He he figured it out, and at the end, it's uh, the Blood Plague dishing out the hurt. And we're back on Lost Province. For, uh, Santa the wants game. to run it back. Yeah, the last game is best of three. 
we'll see which immortals they go for. We've seen Magico. Yeah, Magico has changed it up. He's played Mala once. He's played. <laughs> he's played Zol once. And uh, what do we choose this time? I'm wondering if Fool's Bay, they just both decide to play Aru. Is Aru is a bit faster in general, right? They're a bit faster to get around the mm -hmm. map. So it makes it a bit easier to intercept and get around. And Magico stand, sticking with Zol. And what does Santa go for? I wouldn't be surprised for him sticking with Orzum. He's had some decent success with him. And, uh... Yep. Yeah, exactly. Trying it again. Fully running it back. Yeah. Well, as, you, as you've mentioned, a little big part of it was just Magical getting that third base in the bottom left corner this whole game, running it round. Yeah. Uh, but this time, Magical heading for double E for to begin with. What type of tricks is he up to? Double Ether into... Well, into Scout. You know, what, what is Santa up to? And Santa's going for fast expand. They want they want to win the economy game. Like, really straight up win this time. Yeah. What well, the thing is, going double Ether means that if Mag if if Santa was going for some type of proxy, Magical just hard counters it. No, he yep. doesn't. He sees the expansion and says, like, okay, well, you're not going for... I'm not going to hard counter you. But it's okay. I have other, thing, other things up my sleeve. Like, sending that symbiote on the east side so it doesn't get scouted by the teapot? Interesting. Okay. Getting a tower. Getting that early pyre. The Santa's choice here for Magical is do they want to push in try to break Santa's early early economic play? Or do they want to set up an expansion themselves? Because right now, Magical is going to need to do a bit of economic damage to get back even in this game. Yeah. Wait, that, that's a power of timing pushes, right? And that's definitely a timing push of two alters to begin with. Uh, what's the next building? Certainly looks like it. Big timing push. Uh, Godheart or putting down... <laughs> That's so much Efer. It, it could just be some frums, very early frums. By this point, Santa scouted a double Efer, so you could expect it, so all the options are open. More importantly, what does Santa have to defend? Because Magical right now, they have two Zentarius to deal with, but otherwise they could take out this... They could start just really wrecking face in this base as soon as they, as soon as their Bone Stalkers come near. No, I'm not sure Magical wants to necessarily wants to do that, but does he? Okay, yeah. That's exactly what he's doing. No, yeah. For. Not even going for Pyre. They don't want to summon Zol or anything. Just go for as much damage as possible. Uh, yeah. They can kind of Zentari. Oh, there's the Hunting Grounds. Kind of. They can kind of kind of Zentari. Hunting Grounds are up, which will d mean that all the units get double damage for at least one shot once they get in it. I don't know how early you want to go for it, but right now it's just about getting the base down. And Santa shows how he wants to defend it. Getting Zentari, dishing the damage, he has a bit as much range as the Bone Stalkers, gets one of them to begin with, and that's a good trade. Magical's reinforcements come in, as do Santa's. Magical's still applying pressure, but Santa definitely in the winning position. Once Magical gets some solid micro in, more reinforcements for Magical. Looking to apply all that pressure, and this... This may be where we see Santa Claus start to struggle. Their absolvers are coming in, so the Bone Stalkers' days are numbered. But they may be long enough to take this expansion now. Oh, here and comes our... the Empire Unbroken. Doesn't want to deal with it. Even heals it up at the end of the of the duration. And yeah, that's long enough to get the absolvers out. As you said, that's really the main inspiration for this. Losing Bone Stalker or Bone Stalker, though, as Santa has not lost a unit yet. Gets the double damage off the Hunting Grounds. Pretty much undoing what Empire and Broken did. Now the Bone Stalker is looking to find a position to take this expansion out. Even if they lose their lives, it may be worth it. And it appears like Magical will be able to get out of there. Takes the expansion out. Runs off. Loses only four or five Bone Stalkers at the end. Yeah, that, that's decent work behind this. Magical expands. Uh, Santa will re-expand behind this. And they'll both... I'm actually not sure at all who's ahead right now, as Santa has a great potential for counterattack, right? Getting those... Uh... Oh, there's nothing that's going to stop them. Like, the Absolvers the absolvers oh, can push in until the Thrums get set up. Oh, yeah, but this was just really smart from uh, from, from Magical, right? He went for double Efer from the get-go. That means he can get his Thrums as soon as he can. Like, this was all about that big push, but behind it, he gets his Thrums out, and the Thrums can stop any type of push that does not have anti-air. And none of these units shoot up, Santa. You're coming in, you'll do some damage, but not for long. If they've clued in, they will get a scepter. We have actually we have seen sentinels come in. Like sentinels do come in from Santa Claus pretty regularly. I expect they're going to be knowing, hey, I'll just go for the sentinels and be fine. Like it won't be a problem. Yeah. Although bone stalkers do shoot up, so as long as all the units stay together, Santa should be fine. 
Uh, it'll be about the initial position. Once the uh, units start getting position, Absolvers kind of stop you from really coming forward. And that Well, if the Sentinels come in, that also stops the harassment from the Thrums. Like, yes, it will be harder to defend the Absolvers, but harassment from Thrums, not so much. Granted, harassment from Bone Stalkers is a different story. Magical moving in once again, and Santa Claus has to retreat to deal with this. Without Hallowed Ground this time, either. And he'll be fine. The Bone Stalkers getting in position. There oh, they're getting flanked. Many. Ooh, they're getting flanked hard. Is it enough, though? Can you get it? And one Zentari goes down, but how many bone stalkers will follow? Uh, uh, the they're one. fast in the early game. Yeah, they're too fast in the early game. That's uh, not much can, that can happen. It's Santa putting up the ah, tower. But Magical expected. spots it. They know. <laughs> they know it's a possibility. And they, they just... Uh, nope. You're not... You're, you don't get to do that. Oh, but is it too late? It's almost up, and at this point, Magical knows it's very yeah. hard to destroy it. And Santa knows Thrums are on the way. And they could even Empire and Broken it if he wants to be really annoying with it. <laughs> Just barely, like yeah. It. And they will. Yep. Needs to keep it alive. Of course, that means no Empire and Broken for a while. Uh, but sad this. Magic is going to have to spend a lot of resources to take it down. And while he takes his resources to take it down, that just means that Magical, uh, Santa gets in position to attack his natural. And what a masterstroke from Santa, finding the perfect attack uh, finding the perfect attack path to get his opponent. And it is counted. The Frums come in. One take out the Sentinels. That's the only anti air, so it shouldn't be too bad for Magical. He got this. Sentinels but does he got are this? on the way. But does he got this fast enough? As Santa simply going for the base. Santa's gone for the base. They have the Absolvers set up. One of them does go down to the, th to the Thrums, but the Sentinels' reinforcements are becoming too much of a problem, giving the Absolvers time to tear down the Groveheart. Magical's natural expansion does go down. They have no other bases besides their main, but they also have nothing to stop the Thrums in the fight. It so always comes down to the question of what is better. Did you kill your opponent's main, but you're losing a big part of your army? Is, was it worth it? And Magical's trying to make sure his opponent realizes it is not worth it. He's getting his front to do as much damage as he can, getting those expensive units, Absolvers all dead, and heading for the Scepters next, all the expensive units, as the Sentinels head back to heal. But, uh, yeah, that's a that's quite a large number of fronts that are coming in. Oh, but three Sentinels are enough at this yeah, point. Sentinel, the Sentinel count should be enough to hold off, but it does mean Santa didn't have a chance to take out Magical's base entirely. They've got the Natural, which essentially gives them an even position from before, but not an advantageous one. Yeah, here comes the hunting grounds. Uh, at this point, there are three Sentinels. They healed up a bit, but not quite enough as one goes down. Rest of Magical trying to go for a counterattack, but the units of Santa Claus are here and in good enough numbers they can deal with these of these Bone Stalkers, but they will have the hunting ground ability to dish out the double damage. Is it enough? And oh. certainly causing some problems. Thrums, once again, just Fighting with impunity, the Sentinel's trying to heal up, but that tower is so far away from the natural expansion. Even with the foundation here, Santa simply has not built that up, which means there's no healing for these thrums. Oh, does he get the scepter? Scepter barely survives, and it gets to the tower. Santa jump on it. Oh, it's getting healed up as it is attacks. Ah, it's not. It's not enough. <laughs> Cost of a thrum, but that's that is worth it. Oh yeah, scepter absolutely really worth expensive. it for magical. Yeah, the Sentinel's healed up as well, and at this point, uh, Magical knows he's done. Only three Frums left, but those Frums did, are worth the weight in gold, even if they're pretty light. That was just such a powerful attack. On Magical's end, they are switching over to Resonance. So their ground arm, and Resonance and Red Seers. So the ground army is going to be something to deal with. Granted, the Scepter, one of the Scepters did survive, so Santa Claus is in a position to manage this somewhat. Of course, against Aru, they have, as you said before, ZK, Bone Stalker shoot up. Just... <laughs> Shooting yeah. up at his bone suckers. Oh man, the foundation is still Santa's there. So Santa, Santa can keep being annoying, but it is detected, and this time Magical will not let it go up again. <laughs> As we have seen that before. We have seen, uh, we have seen Santa push it up again and again. And uh, oh yeah, foundation. yeah. If you don't deal with that, Santa will never stop. They will just continue to continue to lock down your natural expansion. It's yeah. it's pretty, it's pretty disgusting. Mm. That is a bit known as a disgusting player by many of our players, but that doesn't matter. That is his goal. He wants to follow the way of uh, the sewers and find out <laughs> ways to get into your opponent's face. From the sewers? Oh, yeah, the Ew. sewers. Yeah, find a way like in. That. No matter the way in. No matter the way in, Santa will find is disgusting. It doesn't matter. He'll find a way. He'll do the damage. All right, well, watch your toilets, everyone.
Mm. Yeah, Santa might find Santa's way not up. coming down the chimney this year. Ooh, that is the other way in. <laughs> Bring some gifts that you prefer not to get. You've heard of cold. Like, why These is this damp? Holes. Why is everything <laughs> damp? What's the smell? Uh, the, the, the smell is just the coal. What happens to it once you leave it with uh, other products, ingest it, and gotten out another way, another pathway? I, hmm. You don't like that imagery, do you? I'm trying to figure out what, how you even eat coal. I mean, I guess it's technically carp. Oh. Isn't coal known as like one of those things that you eat if you eat poisons? Like, oh yeah, it's going to absorb the poison or something. Or maybe I've read the wrong book. Charcoal. Charcoal. Coal, charcoal. What's the difference, you know? Uh, coal is a mineral. Charcoal is basically just burnt wood. Yeah, so the same, right? I mean, chemically, they're similar. There we go. There we go. That's but chemical do similarity that. doesn't mean much. This, like, <laughs> small differences make a huge change to how they work. Ah, boring. Actually, you told me that the hydrogen and the oxygen are different. <laughs> I can breathe. You put them together and they explode. But then they make water, which makes explosions go away. Oh, huh. it's all about the water. Now it comes yep. back down to, uh, to hydrogen and oxygen. I mean, it is kind of the basis for life, and also I have a glass of water here that I've been drinking gradually because I don't want to lose my voice. And behind all this, okay, that's that's not a sewer path though. But I of course see it immediately. Magical wanted to be cheap. I don't know. It is, it is the back door. It is the back door. It is a way in. A way in. You weren't expecting. You don't want it there, but it does come, and it is painful. And all this, Santa has maintained a significant army advantage. Magical. They've been focusing heavily on switching over into, well, caster tech, amber womb tech, but haven't really had a chance to expand all that much, so getting the resources needed to actually build out their army before Sandin gets to them, that's proven to be the main challenge going forward. If both boxes are naturals, like the natural has been lost multiple times in this game, neither of them taking a special base, Santa getting his fourth, Icors being as annoying as they can, which is quite a bit. But there are twice as many bases as magical. Hmm. That is a good place to be. Oh man. Here it comes. No, I don't work. don't fight that. I know I said moats are good defensively, but not against Icors. Ooh, but how about dead Icors? Against dead Icors, you can do whatever you want, they're dead. That's kind of boring, really. I want the corpses kind of. to stay a long time. I want the corpses to arrive and just stay there, and then you can eat them. And I mean that would be I expect that to happen at some point. Oh yeah, you just eat the corpses. Well, yeah, I expect, I expect corpses to exist as a thing in the game. Oh yeah. Like, the units don't just disappear. I've asked if there's going to be some kind of mechanic that interacts with it, and I got a smiley face. So... Yeah, of course you thought about it. Of course it's going to happen <laughs> at some point. I don't know if we're, if we're a full faction or an immortal, but it's too cool to not do. I, actually, it's I got a bit more detail on like, basically that it is something that's a tricky design space, so I don't like, I don't know what the plan is, but I expect it's it's going to be... It sounds like it's just hard to do without throwing everything else off. Or throwing off yeah. the power budget. Yeah. yeah, the power budget seems really I mean, as that. it is, we already... Like, Mala already kind of does that with the incubators. Somewhat, yeah. And, her, and the new power ability, the Red Harvest. So it's not like interacting with death isn't a part of the game. But it's also an expensive part of the game that has been difficult to figure out how to make work best. And how long would the corpses stay there as well? Oh, good question, yeah. You just don't want that many assets in the game forever. Because that'd be uh, expensive on the game. <laughs> oh no, I expect they wouldn't last for too long. Probably in the order of a few dozen seconds. Yeah. It's pretty typical. Wait, a few dozen seconds? That's yeah, like 20-30 seconds. Oh, okay. It's more than I expected. Oh, Empire Broken comes in, but misses the, the tower that could have possibly saved it. And Santa getting as much, uh, Magical getting as much damage as he can with the tower down. Gets the moats and Santa needs to head back to deal Santa? with those. Santa seemed so far ahead a while back, but now They did, but they've been struggling to get through. Like, the thing is, Magicals may have fewer units, but trying to break through the Resonant, Resonant Bone Stalker, like... You don't quite beat them with Absolvers. Like, Absolvers kind of help with the Bone Stalkers, but don't really help with the Resonance. The Savages kind of help with the Resonance, but Bone Stalkers wreck them. Howlers kind of help if the if your opponent's oh, undeployed, okay. which is exactly what we're going to be now as Santa Claus takes out a Resonant for free. Yeah, but he has a lot of blood in his hands now. And by blood in his hands, I mean he's bleeding from everywhere. And it also goes on his hands. 
blood in his hands and his feet and his eyes. Yeah, it's uh, it's his everywhere. Nose. It's it's the kind of blood you don't scalp. want to have. Yeah, the scalp is really the itchy one, and that's the one you want to heal up at this at the citadel. It has a, you know, the citadel has a bit of a hair shampoo that really helps with that blood. That's the idea. Well, Santa Claus getting their shampoo shop up on the ramps or setting up the foundation for it at least. In the foundation does oh. magical. Ooh. Oof. Yeah, see, the thing is, I was talking about Santa building up his army slowly, but he's really getting a powerful army. He has the Hallowers, he has he has the throne, so yeah, Santa's playing Orzu. He's playing defensively safe, not really committing to too much, just getting as much as possible up. Two attack with a really powerful punch that comes in soonish, I suppose. That he, ha he has the big army now. He's ready to push in with the big damage. And the defense in case of run buys, which is more important because Santa Claus... This game, Santa's been doing a lot of one army retreats. Not generally what you want to do. Okay, once again, going to attempt for that base trade. Magical does not have the resources to start just setting up expansions around the map this time around, which means Santa has a better shot of making this work. Yeah, Santa, one base goes down, but Santa's at the cost of one there. base of their own. Oh no, he lost a throne. Like he has a decent army there. The absolver's already in position, but getting focused. Oh, it's not, it's not deployed. Out. It was never deployed. Yeah, the blood comes in, but you know, it's enough. It's enough, especially with the to slow him down and Matsuko is forced to retreat. Those Centauri and that Halloward defended by the Citadels and the Towers, forcing Matsuko back. Of course, Matsuko behind all this is also attacking uh, Santa's third, no, fourth base, and ignoring the Citadels this time. The Empire Unbroken went out at the third base, so he doesn't have to worry about it. He takes the base, escapes with most of the Bone Stalkers. Citadels there, but don't matter anymore. One base of the Constitution, Santa falling behind as a result. Their army advantage will carry them at least. So it's oh yeah, it's not over for them, but Magical's clawing the way back into the game. So live truly. Okay. Red However, this here. this fight here could be it. Santa Claus jumping on Magical's forces avoids most of the blood plague with their frontliners. It will take out one of the behemoths, second behemoth, trying to stay in this, but simply does not have the position to work with. The rest of the ground forces cannot support. And the third base is doomed. Master or. Bone Stalker's trying to flank, but the Absolvers see it coming. They see through those tricks and wipe them out completely. Blood Plagues only help for softening up. But so many units are just blocking off the Absolvers. If Santa Claus can run away without losing their Absolvers, this is a massive win for them. Two Absolvers do go down. One Absolver is trying to hold the line. A big risk on that Absolver, but hey. Not Santa bad. Claus maintaining a significant advantage from that, from yeah. that assault. Yeah, the blood plates were so powerful there. The oh, front... also thrown in the back line. Oh, thrown harassing. Because why okay. not? Yeah. yeah, always attack multiple places. Yeah, at magical's once. broke. Magical can't actually get any more anything right now. Yeah, so magical's next... broke right now. Yeah, that's good. That's gonna that could be the game ender here. Santa still that has could be. all his base on the east are still mining. Oh, he lost one of them, but he's remaking them. Behind us, yep. Santa has enough to remake his army. So, yeah, this looks like uh, magical's in a pretty tough spot. He's... He'll try his best to come forward and. Take the next fight, but that's a powerful army stand, especially if you can heal up. Arox coming through from magical desperate attempt to get rid of this throne. One Arox will do. Uh, but he needs to attack at the right time, or the or sword will stop him in his tracks. If you ever jumped on something and the throne just stops you, it's kind of annoying. It just like well, pierces through your whole body. Yeah, yeah, don't jump on swords. That's that's hazardous to your health. Santa Claus. Again, they're still playing Orzum, playing it slow. Wants to wants to secure the expansion before moving forward because they don't if they lose their army again, that is going to make it far easier for Magical to get back in the game than they currently have going for them. Yeah. Well, still some behemoths here. Behemoths can uh can win you some fights more than uh more than you think. Oh my god, that that throne's still here. And not goes not down. Anymore. Goes down, Magical's back onto mining. Yeah. I mean, that throne did what it needed to. It gave Santa all the time in the world to set up their side expansions. So that means Santa has all the time in the world to start rebuild. Well, they had all the time in the world to rebuild. And now they can just push if they can find the right angle to go from. Do his best. It's got to be scrappy, though. Don't lose anything. Don't go Avoid the, most like the blood plague. Avoids the root. Oh. But Magical avoids the Swords of Death. 
Magical needs to get luckier more often than Santa, however. Yeah, the army value tells the story of this tale. The behemoth is showing out the Quiddles. Quiddles use the damage, but not quite enough as the army density of Santa is huge and gets rid of those Quiddles almost immediately. Blood Plague whiffing. Magical not able to really do all that much to stop Santa Claus' advance. And yeah, Santa at this point is going back to Orzuming. He says, I have a big army. I don't have to jump onto you. I'm just going to stop you from expanding too much and expand yeah. of my own. Get the towers up. And get the towers, happened. build expansions, get a ton of pyre. Like, how many towers does Santa even have at this point? Also, it's like, gotta have at least 10. Yeah. Yeah, that's like every. No, an extra 10 pyre per 8 seconds. It's pretty much an extra okay. pyre per second at this point. Santa's had enough. He's jumping out of his opponent. This could be it. Blood Plague trying to stop at the root, able to at least give at Magical some time, but the, the army value is too small for Magical to take full advantage. Moves back to the tower, drops into the Blood Plague. Santa Claus doesn't want to be reckless. Goes to the natural or goes to the third instead, which has no defenses, forcing the behemoths to come to them. Santa spots the Bone Stalkers. There's spots the behemoths. Stops once again. Another Blood Plague. Starting to soften up Santa's forces a little bit more. Third Blood Plague whiffs. Santa needs that tower set up in order to be able to get a safe starting point. Yes. Magical really re-implemented a lot of his army with, with Magi, which will heal up his units from the Blood Plague. Able to stay up on the map a bit longer to Santa. With it all oh, his... Spots the Bone Stalker. It's a nice try with the run behind the Bone Stalker. Eh, but it's not going to be enough. Again. Yeah, I feel this point Magical, Magical has to. Magical has no choice. Like, run by is their only hope to try to even out some of the economic disadvantage they have. They do have a... Th like, the third was not taken out. It's... That's under some threat, but they still have it. They still have two mining bases. They are getting a third. So Magical has a path back into this game. It's just Low a question of how, when... Yeah, it's just... Can, will Santa come in and start wrecking that before Magical actually gets it to pay off? Because at this point, Santa's really just taking his time, spending his fire as he gets it to put down those towers everywhere. Spend fire to make fire. That is the Orzum way. Another <laughs> tower foundation, sheesh. Yeah, he definitely needs that one. He I mean, at this point, look at the power. Oh, doesn't even matter. Magical calls it with a GG. Santa goes to the grand finals. Solid position to work from here as Magical will be dropping down to the Losers Finals to fight Itlander for the for the runback potential. As mm. both these players actually do have a runback on deck. 